What's up everyone and welcome to part two of this SA Masterclass Road to Kite Loop series. In part one, we have been looking at getting used to the power of the kite with exercises like the down loop jibe and the jump transition with kite loop out. In this part, we will be looking at your first kite loops and the exercises to get there. Try to do them in 20 to 25 knots. And to start off, we have to look at one essential thing, and that's the right jump. So let's get going with that. The right jump in this case is a jump where you get pulled straight up and afterwards go straight down. As this is an example of a bad jump, you can see that the kite rather pulls me forward than up. And this is going to be a problem later on. So where did this go wrong? If we look at the takeoff, you can see that I don't really edge properly and I yank my kite to the other side of the wind window. Because I steer my kite so fast, it pulls me forward instead of up. When doing kite loops, this forward speed can result in less line tension and therefore a kite that recovers less quick. Not something you want. This is what a good jump looks like. You can see that I edge for a lot longer and steer my kite slower. The kite follows the edge of the wind window and therefore pulls me up more rather than forward. When you pull a kite loop with a jump like this, you will notice that your kite recovers a lot quicker. And that's what we want. A slow recovering kite can mean a big crash, like you have seen in my previous episode. So get this one right. So the key points to land this jump where you go straight up and straight down are mainly found in the takeoff and the timing. Make sure to hold your edge for a long time while really digging those heels in and jump off the water just before your kite hits 12. Next to that, it's important that you don't just yank the kite from one side to the other, but rather steer it slowly along the edge of the wind window so the kite is on top of you and pulls you up instead of forward. If you got this jump right, it's time to move on. This is your first kite loop. The faster that you ride into this trick, the higher that you'll fly. So you want to ride in with medium speed and the kite at one. You're going to steer the kite up towards 12 and edge towards the wind, pull the bar down and pop off the water as the kite reaches 12. As you reach the apex, pull hard on the backhand and pull the kite into a loop. Stop steering when your kite points towards 12 and land. Steer the kite back into the wind window to ride out of your first kite loop. Edge into the wind when you pop off the water. Pull hard on the backhand with the bar all the way down. Then tension up your stomach muscles and pull your legs in to absorb the pull. Point the board downwind and absorb the impact from the landing. Steer the kite back into the wind window to ride out with speed. And when you're ready, untwist your bar when you have full control over the kite. If you want to land these kite loops in a smooth way and don't just get yanked around like a ragdoll, it's very important that you pull your bar all the way down on the takeoff and steer at least 45 degrees. Like that, the kite will make a very small loop in the top of the wind window, which makes for minimal power and quick recovery. Next to that, you will get power from the kite and it will pull you with. So it's very important to pull your legs in a little bit and tension up those stomach muscles so you don't face plant. These kite loops should keep you busy for quite a bit. And most likely you won't even need this in your first session. But if you start jumping higher and that kite starts getting closer to 12 or even behind 12, it's important to do a kite loop with a small down loop. So that's what we'll look at next. The big difference between a kite loop with a small down loop and the kite loop you've seen before is the riding speed into the trick and the height of the jump. Further on, all the timings remain the same up to the apex of the jump. You're going to stop steering when your kite points towards 12 and you sheet your bar out for a third. As your kite reaches 12 and you're almost landing, it's time to prepare for the down loop. Pull your bar all the way down and steer the kite hard to one side. Point the board downwind, land and continue steering the kite towards the riding direction. Let's have a bit of a closer look on that trick. As mentioned before, the start remains the same. You're going to stop steering when your kite points towards 12 and you're going to sheet the bar out for a third. Pull the bar down and steer hard when you're almost landing and your kite passes 12 o'clock. 
point the board downwind and continue steering the kite into a loop. As you do a crosswind course and steer the kite down towards your riding direction. Untwist the bar if needed. You can land the kite loop with either your left foot or your right foot in front. This all depends on your personal preference. But the most important part is, when you do land with your right foot in front, down loop to the left. This will stabilize your body and therefore make the landing easier. If you decide to land with your left foot forward, you will have to down loop to the right, making for a more stable landing. Just to remember that your kite should always cross 12 o'clock on your down loop. This is where your kite will find the most lift and that will result in a softer landing. Similar to all the other loop exercises that I gave you, it's very important that you pull your bar all the way down and steer at least 45 degrees on your loop and your down loop. There is one short moment in between where your kite is recovering towards 12 o'clock and flying straight up where it actually helps if you sheet your bar out for a third. This helps with the kite flying up quicker and therefore you can pull your down loop earlier. But be careful, don't pull your down loop too early. It's very important that the kite flies slightly behind you before your landing so it can actually slow you down. And that's already the end of this week's episode. Next week Thursday we'll be looking at part number three in this Road to Kite Loop series. Over there we'll have a look at even bigger loops and how to land them. For now, enjoy your exercises, hit that subscribe if you haven't done so already, like the video, comment if you have any questions and I'll see you next week.